Before we get into today's juicy Xeon content, I will put out a precursor and say, depending where you live at the moment, due to a particular virus, your shipping times could be delayed massively. For instance, me getting something from China delivered at the moment, I'm looking at around 70 days in total from when I ordered that stuff to get it into Australia. Now, I know some people in other countries, they've just flat out stopped uh, shipments coming in from China and then other countries for instance I'm getting reports from the UK where it's not a problem at all shipments are still coming in as normal so I'm not sure your mileage may vary but I'm just putting that out there before you buy something off Aliexpress for example there may be a massive delay but honestly I don't think that's enough to stop the Xeon crew <laughs> If you want eight cores, 16 threads, but you don't wanna spend a whole lot of money, then today's video may just be for you. In the past, we have covered eight core 16 threaded Xeons, mainly from the Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge era. However, they did have their limitations in that the motherboards that supported them most likely didn't support DDR4 memory or PCIe M.2 NVMe on board or had things like native USB 3 missing. However, these Xeons that we're covering here today are from a different breed in that they support even the latest instruction sets like AVX2 and they don't break the bank. Where there's three eight cores in particular that can be modded to get their max turbo multipliers. And these ones at the moment on the market are the 2630L V3, the 2630V3, which I'm holding in my hand, and also the 2640V3. Now I'm only featuring two of the three in today's comparison, as that's all I've got on hand. I unfortunately didn't order the L version, but the big difference between these three is their max turbo multiplier, and with that, their max all core boost speeds. So we're looking at for the L, 2.9 gigahertz max, and then for the one I'm holding here, the 2630V3, 3.2 gigahertz max, and then for the 40 variant, that's gonna go to 3.4 gigahertz max, making it the highest clocked Xeon that we're featuring here this month on the channel. So at either 48 or $71 ship worldwide, are these eight core Xeons a good buy, especially when it comes to gamers or desktop enthusiasts? Let's do what we do best and talk benchmarks with you guys, even comparing it to two popular CPUs out there at the moment, the Ryzen 5 2600, which can be had for around $100 shipped, and also the Ryzen 5 3600, which is one of the best, latest and greatest CPUs to get. So going through the 1080p numbers here for you guys, the first title is Assassin's Creed Syndicate, where the 8-core Xeons did very well in this benchmark. And this is a game that does like single-core IPC and clock speeds as much as it likes a couple of extra threads. These 8-cores are sitting comfortably between the Ryzen 5 2600 and the Ryzen 5 3600. But at their price points, as you'll see with the next benchmark here, Far Cry New Dawn, they are providing pretty good performance. This is a single-core beast of a game. This is pretty much the worst-case scenario for these Xeons, especially compared to the other CPUs here that have higher clock speeds and better IPC. And we can see here, we're still getting 87 FPS on the 3.2 gigahertz 2630 V3, and then on the 2640 V3, we're getting a bit more average FPS, making that 200 megahertz a little bit better, especially if you are a gamer. Then moving over to F1 2019, the Xeons yet again delivered with decent FPS. And I do remind you guys, we are again testing with an RTX 2080 Ti, which is pretty much above and beyond what I'm guessing someone will be coupling with these uh, CPUs. Then what about Escape from Tarkov? And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'll probably stop benchmarking this game after this month as it's just so random in its nature. You guys said in the comments, you can just get these random dips out of nowhere. And that is true for pretty much all the CPUs I tested here in that I had to go through the numbers quite a few times to get the average FPS stable. And what we saw here was the Haswell Xeons are still doing fine. You're getting over 100 average FPS on both these CPUs. And it's also a pretty good experience considering they have a lot of level three cache at their disposal. Then what about the last benchmark, Shadow of the Tomb Raider? This is where the Xeons did score out another victory in my opinion, especially when we compare it to the Ryzen 5 2600, which arguably needs more expensive memory. And now here's the kicker. I did use 
pretty much budget memory in this system. The cheapest memory I could find, I put it in quad channel and just left it on auto out of the box. Though that being a benefit in that you can save money on DDR4 memory can also be a limitation on these motherboards, especially with the Xeons, since once you do this modification, and I'll put the link to the video up here if you guys haven't seen it, it's basically the tutorial on how to get the most out of these uh, Xeons and boost them essentially to their max core speeds. There is a limitation in that the RAM speeds will only go up to the official supported speeds of the CPU. Now that being said, the biggest benefit of these Xeons right here is simply their price performance. Pulling up the Cinebench R20 numbers show you that they're comfortable running AVX2 instruction sets, and of course they do so with pretty decent power consumption even by 2020 standards. So for something that was made way back in like 2014, these Xeons are now, especially with this Unlock V3 Turbo Hack mod and the budget motherboards coming out on AliExpress, where today we tested with the Machinist, which comes in at $70 shipped, they're showing just how much potential you can get now out of the older hardware. Where I personally see the V3 variants putting to rest the V1, that's the Sandy Bridge, and also the V2, the Ivy Bridge Xeons. But for me personally, there's always still gonna be a place in my heart for X58, don't worry about that. Though when it comes down to it, the 2630 V3 and also the 2640 V3, I like both these CPUs. If you're happy with 3.2 gigahertz across eight cores, 16 threads, then the 2630 is gonna be fine, especially at its price point of 48 bucks. Though if you wanna spend a little bit more and get those extra clock speeds, which as we saw with Far Cry New Dawn, is important for some particular titles out there, mainly, admittedly, the unoptimized ones, then that uh, extra money spent, especially when you couple it in with the whole build, may just be worth it, where it's getting that extra 200 megahertz, and of course, that will mean extra frames in some games. Though the biggest benefits to these CPUs right here is I feel the eight cores, 16 threads. And when we look at those Cinebench numbers, that's pretty much gonna span across to a lot of other things that you may wish to do, like a video editing, for example, especially if you can get something like a Wannan motherboard, which supports DDR3 registered, and then you can get 32 gigabytes in an eight core 16 threaded machine happening on very low money. Though there's going to be the big elephant in the room, which we're going to talk about preemptively, and that is the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. I haven't got my hands on one of these. I did reach out and uh, try to get one sent to me, but the person who was going to send it to me, they pulled out and they couldn't actually get a sample themselves. So that CPU, especially if you can get it for 85 bucks, it's looking like it will be a really good buy, uh, especially when you compare it even to the Ryzen 5 2600, which is virtually the same thing. And in terms of the Ryzen 5 3600, as you guys could see in those numbers, it's a great balanced CPU. If you wanna get on the latest and greatest and you don't mind spending a bit more money, then that CPU is gonna be really good too. But essentially what these Xeons offer when it comes down to it all, is something that you can get anywhere in the world readily available for pretty good prices. And that's what impresses me most with the budget, six cores, eight cores, and we've also got the 12 core coming as well, which is gonna be the granddaddy. I'm gonna do a lot more tests for that one because that is the one that I'm looking forward to the most. With all that out of the way, I asked you guys on Discord what you wanted to see me test some of these CPUs with. Some of you said 5700 XT, some of you said 2080 Ti, but I will state again, if you're going to be getting a mid-range GPU, even the six core 12 threaded CPU that we took a look at in this video right here, coupled with a $200 GPU, is going to give you absolutely amazing performance even in 2020. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also let us know in the comments section below what you think of the V3 Xeons. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always just like this question of the day where we've got this from a Nenlinus who asks, I don't suppose this will work for the Xeon E52687 WV2. So this is a question that's related to, of course, these Xeons. And I did answer a similar question previously, but I do wanna make this, uh, it's an important thing to know that this uh, turbo multiplier hack, the all core boost is pretty much only for the V3 uh, quality sample or retail samples in that it was the only known Xeon for this exploit to exist on. And so with that aside, I'm grateful that it does exist on these CPUs because they're getting now dumped for so cheap and the motherboards are coming in at really good prices, making it just really good price performance in 2020. As opposed to the V1 and V2 Xeons, maybe there are some exploits out there that haven't been found yet 
Who knows, but Intel tend to do some real funny things with these Xeons. For instance, uh, they made an eight core 16 threaded overclockable Xeon, but they didn't make an eight core mainstream CPU on X79. And then also they made a 14 core 28 threaded ring bus CPU that was overclockable on the Xeon line back in 2014, which was essentially what was known as the Xeon Unicorn, but no one has seen one of these CPUs out in the wild to this date. I'm actually very curious to see one. I'd love to see one even in 2020. So if you know someone who has one, then let us know in the comments too. Anyway, I've rambled on enough. I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.